not anywhere in the world. What I would like for you to do is to, I'm going to pass these two around. Do not steal them. It's all I got. I will break your arms. Okay. This is a secretary of the army in my last few months in Africa. Okay. Secretary Hillary Clinton was there. Okay. This is what the world's going to start to look like by 2015. How far is that away? It's not very far, is it? That means you better get prepared, folks. That's the only slide in the world like that. You won't find it nowhere in the world. I snapped that with a little camera. I was in that office that you see. That's the Secretary of the Army. He said in 2015, events are going to start happening. That's going to transform us into this. Now, you've seen the Constitution. I'm not blowing smoke up your backside, folks, because you ain't got nothing I want. And I'm not afraid of a man in here. You don't intimidate me. So I'm not like, that's true stuff. This is going to happen. It cannot be stopped. It's not going to stop until you get in touch with your state legislators and get up in their backside. Right. You've got to start teaching your children. You need to get that five and six year old and teach them their birth certificate, and you need to start pounding it into them. You've got to make your man up. You've got to make your mind up to man up or get out. Lead, follow, or move. This is serious business. There's going to be a lot of blood, folks. This represents that the world's been broken down into ten regions. Oh. I'm glad you brought the world has been broken down into ten regions. This is one of the models, just one. It's probably going to change between now and 2020. By 2020, this will be in effect. <clears throat> the United States has been subdivided into ten regions. Everything is ten. Everything is ten. Okay. Iowa, Iowa, Nebraska, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, and Missouri are zone seven. The boundaries and the county boundaries have been erased. That's why you see all these joint task force on police. They don't, the policemen don't know this. And when I talk to them, they say, okay, Paige.
More now of our special coverage here tonight, life in the U.S. in 10 years' time. By that time, there may be all kinds of new ways to safeguard and identify all those things that make each of us unique, our faces, even our fingerprints, even our eyes. Here now with more on the future of technology, NBC's Tom Costello. The year is 2017. You're rushed to a hospital, unconscious with no ID or medical history. But thanks to a microchip under your skin, it's all there. Science fiction 20 years ago, but a biometric reality today. The technology is based on answering one simple question. Am I who I say I am? Already, fingerprints and iris scans verify passenger identities at airports. Within 10 years, that technology may be even more widespread. And look for more complex facial recognition programs that scan a crowd of thousands looking for a single terrorist. Today's facial recognition software starts with the eyes. Then, it maps out the contours of the face and compares that against a database of millions, a database that's growing by the day. What's next? At the University of Bath in England, researchers predict big changes for consumers. I think it is possible to free us completely of our wallets and keys using biometric technology, if that's what people want in 10 years' time. In fact, it's already here. The latest home security locks use fingerprints to control deadbolts. And at the Jewel Osco grocery store in Chicago, some customers pay using their fingerprints. No paper or plastic. You don't really need anything other than your hand, and you already got that with you. So will future department stores scan our irises, like in the movie Minority Report, then offer products catered to who we are? Hello, Mr. Yakamoto. Welcome back to the Gap. Experts say that technology is here now. The challenge is to safeguard our privacy in a brave new world. Tom Costello, NBC News, Alexandria, Virginia. This here is a Chinese, it's a Chinese mobile, mobile concrete factory. We built the road from, if you know your, if you know eschatology, and I hope that you do, anybody ever heard Psalms 83? Anybody familiar with that? You know Armageddon? Armageddon is not one battle. Armageddon is three battles. Armageddon is a war, but there's three battles. In Psalms 83, Russia invades Israel. They are beat back. Eight fifths of their army are killed. They go all the way back to Siberia. Is that right? Know your Bible? Amen. Okay. The second battle is with the king of the east. That'd be China. They come down with 200,000 arm. That 200,000 cells. That's 200 million. They're the only people right now on earth that can feel that. Something you may not know about is all the wild horses in American West for the past 10 years have been shipped over there. This, this road that I'm going to show you starts in China and ends at the mouth of the Euphrates River in, in Iraq. Do you know what this means? Are you, are you seeing where I'm going with this? MRS. Pardon? Out of supply. Do I? It's an MRS. No it's, out of no, it's not MRS. Are you, do you understand the significance of this? No. no. That's where the army is going to come from that's going to invade Israel mm -hmm. for the second battle. China. The final battle is when the Lord himself comes back and kills everybody. Okay? That's how close this is. 